Jr., Woody Page Jr., George Sedano. I have one question for you guys. Who's playing the role of Ezekiel Elliott today? <laughs> the dominating oh, Bengals, the devastating Eagles, the persevering Kansas City, and yes, the worst last play of all time. Since the last worst last play of all time. And this is the news of the day. Dak called the loss 100% on him, and the team agreed. Have you ever seen a team call out their own QB like that? Let's go around the horn. Honest reporting coming from the Dallas Cowboys. DallasCowboys.com. That was aggressive. You don't see that kind of transparency with a lot of teams. Give them credit for it. We could start with the Cowboys, but you people, you people and people of your ilk have been ignoring the Cincinnati Bengals, not giving them anywhere near the respect they deserve. The league giving them no respect, negative respect. We start with the AFC champions. Hello, you want to make them the bad guy? Say hello to the bad guy. Dominating, dismantling performance at Buffalo. Frank Isola, around the horn to you. What is it about yeah. the way these Bengals show up and win in the playoffs? Yeah, just because there's a winter storm in Buffalo doesn't mean the Bengals are a bunch of snowflakes. And it all starts with that quarterback, and the team takes on the personality of that quarterback. He's aggressive. He's a little bit cocky. He's poised. And look at the way they played. They held, the, they held Buffalo to a season-low 10 points. The defensive coordinator of that team, Lou Anaruma, the pride of Staten Island, did a pretty good job. There you go, Francis. That quarterback. I, I'm Wagner. still a Mahomes guy, but Joe Burrow is right there. He's right behind him. He's a great player. Harry Lyles Jr., how did Cincinnati do this? Go into Buffalo and dominate the way they did. You know, a lot of people talk about Joe Burrow's coolness or his cockiness. It's really confidence, and that is contagious amongst that team. They go out and show it almost every single Sunday. And the way it manifested itself this past Sunday was that offensive line. We all know, we talked about it all last week, how they were missing three guys, and that was going to be a problem. And how was Joe Burrow going to be able to stand up? Well, they got the job done. Joe Mixon ran for 105 yards. They gave up just one sack. And on the 32 rushes that they did have, just one of those was for a negative play. So to me, when you see a guy like Joe Burrow and you see your leader be that confident, that is contagious amongst the team. And it, the result showed itself on Sunday. Woody Page to see Cincinnati come out and dismantle Buffalo the way they did. Harry, you left out one C word. How about this comical when he said after the game, I guess they have to send all the, uh, the, the, the ticket prices back to everybody. Uh, from the, from the, the neutral refunds. field game, yes. Yeah, I, I <laughs> think, refund. but I think he was making a great point there that there was never a moment where Cincinnati was going to be involved in any kind of neutral site game. They were going to have to go and play somewhere else mm -hmm. in the entire uh, you know, AFC championship. So I, I think that they not only showed it to us, meaning all of us, they showed it to the NFL. You forgot about right. us Chip in on all their of shoulder. this conversation. And I, I thought that the most important aspect of watching that game in the very beginning is they picked up right where they left off in the game that was suspended. They had scored a touchdown, drove right down the field. They did it once again. Once they got ahead of the Bills, the Bills looked uninvolved particularly their quarterback. So I think Cincinnati deserves all the accolades for this, for getting back to the AFC championship game. And possibly, uh, right now, you've got to consider they could be in the Super Bowl one more time and win it this time. If there was one panelist who gave Cincinnati some credit on this show, George, I'm going to single you out here and give you your points back because you believe in these Bengals from the start, the way they went into Buffalo well, and played I, well, with Tony, a chip on their shoulder. Tony, if we're being honest, the first couple of weeks I was very worried about them because I didn't think that they could protect Joe Burrow. But after about week three yeah. or four, that's when I really started to change my tune because of the way they were able to protect him. <laughs> after the, the first six games of the season, he was sacked multiple times in every game. From that point on, he was sacked nearly half the amount of times he was sacked in those first six games. And here's the thing. He was pressured in this game only 21% of the time. So let's give credit to these guys. Carmen, Volson, Sharping, Adenji, uh, Karras. Those are the guys that played on the offensive line. Offensive line is not sexy. We talk a lot about Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon and Joe Burrow. And those guys deserve credit, but none of it happens if those offensive linemen and three of those guys, as we mentioned, are backup guys going in there and dominating the line of scrimmage. Yesterday. I solo back in. 
Joe Burrow completed his first nine passes. They're winning 14-0. It never felt like the Bills were really in that game. And then, of course, that ridiculous call, and Jamar Chase catches the ball. And because when he lands out of bounds, it moves a little bit. For some reason in this world, that's not a catch. It should have been a lot worse than that. That team is talented. That. that receiving core, the tight end, the running back, they're a dangerous, dangerous team. If a running back crosses the plane of the end zone with the ball, just just one it's millimeter, awesome. it's a touchdown. And anything <laughs> could happen, right? You can throw the ball in the air. You can drop it on. That's right. <laughs> He's got four hands on the ball. He's got six feet on the ground, and the ball moves a little bit, and they take it Firm away. Firm control. About the Bills. <laughs> Ridiculous. They had the home field. They had the snow. They had the offensive and defensive line advantage, they thought. And they had DeMar Hamlin in the house, which was wonderful to see. But it was never a go from Jump Street, and now the season is over. I just heard Woody Page put it on Josh Allen. Harry, I'll start with you. Was this year a step back for the Bulls or just a disappointing ending? I think it was both. I, I mean, when we came into the season and the expectations that we had upon this team, it seemed pretty reasonable because Josh Allen looked like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And you had a defense that was coming off of a historically great year that not just returned almost every single person from that team and that defensive unit, but added Vaughn Miller. Um, and they came out in that opening week, had an incredible 31-10 win against the Rams, who were still healthy at that point, the defending Super Bowl champs. And it looked like, okay, they're the team that's promised. And then you have the Von Miller injury. We forget about the Micah Hyde injury. We talk about DeMar Hamlin. DeMar Hamlin was Michael, or I'm sorry, Micah Hyde's backup. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you had Daquan Jones that also missed the game yesterday on that defensive line. So this team was great during the year, but it was not that same powerful team that we saw at the beginning of the season. So, yes, it's absolutely disappointing. A lot on injuries there from Harry Lyles. George, did you see it as a team that was banged up and not in the right? Or, or is this just complete letdown and losing the home game? It's a big letdown, Tony. They were the Super Bowl favorite. They're the first Super Bowl favorite, preseason Super Bowl favorite, to not make it to at least the conference championship since 2015 when the Seattle Seahawks were in that particular position. But this is about the Cincinnati defense. I gave the offensive line a lot of love. The Cincinnati defense deserves a lot of love because the Bills are about big plays, particularly when things break down. Josh Allen is one of the best quarterbacks when it comes to rolling out of the pocket or getting out of the pocket when things break down and scoring points. He had nine touchdowns in those situations this year. He only had four attempts in this game. He was one of four outside the pocket. They kept him in the pocket, and that became a big problem for them. And he also couldn't run the ball, which also was a yeah, big Woody, problem for them. Please, if he give me more run, on Josh Allen here, because I'm not hearing enough on what Josh Allen couldn't get done in the big game. Well, that was the well, unfortunate he aspect, I think. of uh, uh, This team has gotten old, and their window was right now. And they let that window shut on them, and particularly Josh Allen, who can't be, the rest of his career, a guy who's a running quarterback first and a throwing qu quarterback second. And yet, that's what they've been dependent on because he's their leading rusher all the time. I think he just mm -hmm. let down Buffalo, let down his teammates. He played poorly yesterday. I saw Nah, they were, in his, they were in his face all game. This is a guy, remember the great game they had last year against Kansas City. What hurt them is the, the injuries on defense, especially with Von Miller. That loss that they had to Minnesota a few weeks ago, that was the killer for them because that's the one that prevented them from getting home field advantage. They had to go through Cincinnati and then eventually Kansas City. It's not easy. It's still a good team, though. Mm -hmm. I thought there would be more on Josh Allen. More, it doesn't need to be criticism, but more of a stark reality here that that was the biggest game on the field, and he didn't rise to the occasion. We're going to move on. Niners 19, Cowboys 12, and whether the 49ers won this or escaped with this or the Cowboys blew it. Dak Prescott called the loss 100% on him. The team agreed in their official review and post of the game, and they've kept that up throughout the day. There's that, there's the drive before the last drive where they punted, and there's the drive that is the last drive, drive in name only, with the near safety. Schultz not getting out of bounds after contact. Schultz not getting inbounds after the catch. And then the Zeke snap. Look at all this. George, what was all this? Uh, Tony, it was one team understanding how to game plan against another and the other team not understanding that. And, you know, I know we're going to talk about that last drive or whatever, but let's talk about the penultimate drive where they had, you know, a decent amount of time and three timeouts left, over three minutes on the clock, and they start throwing the ball down the field instead of moving it methodically, which they had done really well up to that point. I was completely... 
I was mind boggled. It was mind boggling to me when I don't know if it was Kellen Moore. I don't know if that's Mike McCarthy's call, but nonetheless, I couldn't understand why they chose that particular path. And then they blew 30 seconds at least when they decided to punt the ball. That so made for no you, sense it was not me. even the last drive with the comedy of errors. It was the drive before that. Frank, I the saw before up. that, that was it was terrible. Yeah, George is 100% right. You know, you had Dak Prescott with the two turnovers. That was absolutely a killer. But I'll tell you what, on that last drive, I think myself and all of America is thinking, we want to see them drive down the field and score. Because what is Mike McCarthy going to do if he's one point away from tying? You're going to kick the extra point or you're going to go for two points? And I think either way, Mike McCarthy wouldn't be wrong if he went for two. Unfortunately, we were deprived of the greatest sports argument probably of the year because they did not play well enough. Their defense was great. The offense a big time. All right, was this game about Dak Prescott's shortcomings in the big game, or is it about the game planning in the last three minutes there for Dallas? I mean, it certainly is about Dak because we always look to the quarterback first. And then, of course, the comedy of errors at the end. I mean, the way that Dallas lost this game, we're going to remember it by them essentially doing the sports equivalent of slipping on a banana peel and falling. But to me, this was more about the 49ers and their situation. They did everything that they had to do in order to win this game, given their circumstances. And the biggest circumstance of them all is you're playing with a seventh round quarterback. He did not turn the ball over. They played great defense and he made the one play that he absolutely had to make in this game, even though he threw overthrew George Kittle just a little bit. But that tip drill veteran presence of his caught that football. They got that game winning score. So to me, this was more about San Francisco and what they were able to do as a complete mm. and good team than Dallas's comedy. You think the game's theirs. different if they don't complete that pass to Kittle there? If Purdy, you know, it was, you think the game's different? Could, one thing yeah. about that play, the 100%. way Diggs came in here, 10 years ago, even five years ago, he blows up Kittle. Maybe doesn't even get a penalty right. on that and breaks up the play, but where the league is now, he had to pull up a little bit. Another interesting element of that. Yeah. Woody Page, what decided this game for you? Well, I'm going to go in a side direction here, Tony, and people aren't really talking about it, but when Dallas missed its first extra point, I felt like that just took a lot of air out of that team that, oh, it distracted them for the rest of the game. Every time that they got the football, you were wondering, Frank, oh, are they going to go for two? Are they going to use that kicker? Uh, Is he going to miss another one? They had a fourth down and four that was reasonable that they could have gone for it and they came up to the line of scrimmage and everybody's talking about well they're not going to kick it and I'm sure the players were thinking about that on the sideline and what they were trying to do is draw the 49ers offside and they went ahead and punted at that point but I felt like that was a distraction Mm -hmm. to the team that it screwed them up all the game planning what happened the week before and continued to then you have at the end Magic Mike's last dance that play is will forever (laughs) be known as the worst in all time (laughs) <laughs> okay, I want more on that. You know what? We're going we're to come back and we'll talk more about that play. Magic Mike's last dance would suggest, though, Woody, one, that you're a fan of Channing Tatum, which is fine. And the other is what, what that would be a fireable offense, making a play call like that. I mean, that, that's what you're suggesting. No. Jerry Jones says he's sticking with Mike McCarthy. Jerry Jones and the Cowboys' Twitter handles blaming Dak Prescott for the loss. You agree with that, George Sedano? Yes, absolutely. Dak is close. Update's going to be locked down like four knocks. That he was able to come back and play in the second half and get it done. George, start there. Do you find yourself leaving the game more impressed with KC or a little worried for KC? Tony, unfortunately, I side with a little worried for KC because the Bengals already gave us the blueprint of what they can do to Kansas City with Josh Allen and the Bills, which is keep him in the pocket. And the only guy who's uh, just, the only guy who's more successful than Mahomes outside of the pocket is Josh Allen. He had nine touchdowns. Mahomes had seven when throwing 113 passes outside the pocket this year. So I, I'm not feeling and great about it. we saw what Cincinnati did to Allen this week. Woody Page, impressed or worried? <laughs> I'd be worried if I were Kansas City because they're horses for courses and they're teams for oppositions. And the Bengals have figured out how to beat the Chiefs in the last three games they played against them. And I think that we could see that again, that they've got to be worried that if your quarterback and Patrick Mahomes is not 100% and he has to take a shot in order to play in the game, that you're going to have some problems against the Bengals because Joe Burrow is in great shape. Harry Lyles, you find yourself saying five straight AFC Championship games. That's impressive, or are you just worried about Mahomes here? I mean, it's certainly impressive that he stuck it out and stayed in that game, especially because it turned him into a pocket quarterback. 
But as George pointed out, he threw 113 passes from outside the pocket. That was more than any other quarterback in the NFL. And we know the one thing that is be the most beautiful about Patrick Mahomes' game is his ability to improvise. And when you take that ability away, he's still a really, really good quarterback, but it does take away from the magic that is him. Frank, what did you see from Mahomes over Jacksonville? Yeah, and his ability to improvise is what makes him great. But there was kind of a Michael Jordan quality to it, where you're having one of the best mm -hmm. players in the okay. league injured, still going out and playing, but not just playing, but still being effective. And let's give Chad Henney a little bit of credit here. They dusted him off in the attic. He marches right down the field. It tells you just how well coached and how well prepared the Kansas City Chiefs were. Well, Chad Henney came in, too, and made it 98 yards. Did anything? Wow, that just got... Frank, you used a banned phrase on this show, but I'm going to allow it in this instance because well, we're talking about an MVP Super Bowl winning quarterback with the comparison to a certain player of yours. We'll move on. The most impressive <laughs> team of the weekend, there was the Bengals and there was the Philadelphia Eagles. Did that game end questions about Hurts and the Eagles, the way they dominated the New York Giants? Frank, start with you. Well, yeah, I'm trying to think of how many times the Giants have ever trailed 28 nothing out of any game, much less a playoff game. But this guy right here, Jalen Hurts, was terrific. You know, they had design runs for him. Everyone was worried about his shoulder. He had never been on a team that had won a playoff game before. That defense is tough. You've got to love him because he's a leader. He goes out. He backs up the talk. He was terrific. George Dano. Tony, the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers have the two best rosters in the NFC, and we're proving that out now here over the playoffs. Uh, Jalen Hurts' injury was something we all worried about. He showed us that he can be the old Jalen Hurts again. They're as dynamic a team as we have in the sport. No surprise, they'd beat the Giants. Woody Page. No more calls, Tony. We have a winner. People had wondered about the Eagles, the way they started out the season, and say, at what point are they going to break down? Then when Hurts got uh, hurt, Everybody began to say, well, what can they do now to actually be a championship type team? They proved to everybody yesterday they have the defense, they have a quarterback who's healthy again. They've got the home field advantage. San Francisco going to Philadelphia is not going to be any fun for a West Coast team. Harry Lyle Jr. Yeah, I think they absolutely answered all these questions. And pound for pound, this is an incredible matchup. And a lot of people are going to talk about that Philadelphia offense versus that San Francisco defense. But to me, the key is going to be the Eagles defense against Brock Purdy. They got 44% of pressures on Daniel Jones. If they're able to get that against Brock Purdy as well, to me, that could be the difference in that game. Frank, real quick, on Daniel Jones in New York in the year, which was a success, it's ending like it did, and now his future contractual. Yeah, I, I'm not going to break the bank for him. I think he was good enough. You want him to come back. It's hard to find a quarterback. I don't even think he's had a doubt.